This is Farming with Science. Welcome back to another episode of Farming with Science. Today, I am joined by Mrs. Asia Paolillo. She's the multi-county citrus agent for my area, Hardy, DeSoto, Manatee, and Highlands County. So she is going to take us to a citrus grove and we are going to tour it in search for insect pests. Our goal with the video today is to show you how to properly scout and she's got plenty of experience doing that. She used to be an inspector for the uh, Florida Department of Agriculture. So she's got plenty of experience watching out for bugs and detecting insect pests. Aja, how are you today? I am doing great, Jonah. How are you doing? Glad to be here. I am good. So why, before we, we, we get there, give me some context on why do we have to inspect our citrus in Florida? Okay. Well, as we know, our environment is conducive to many different types of insects, diseases, plant material, all kinds of stuff. Some things are not going to harm your citrus tree. Some things create problems within the citrus grove or even dooryard citrus trees as well. So it's always a good idea to know what's going on with your trees, whether you have one or you have a thousand trees or even more. Um, that way you can keep your production as high as possible and keep your trees as healthy as you can. All right, so with that said, Let's go into video mode and uh, we'll see you at the farm. Hi, so today we are out in a grove, a citrus grove, and we are gonna be looking at different ways of scouting for insects. And as many people know, there are a lot of insects that affect citrus here in Florida. Uh, most notably right now, we're dealing with what we call the Asian citrus psyllid, and that's a very, very small insect that lays its eggs on citrus trees. Um, it goes through its life cycle on the citrus tree, and then it can transmit the bacteria that cause, causes citrus greening, or it's also called HLB. And I'm going to refer to it as HLB from here on, on through. So when we're scouting for insects, what you want to do, depending on the size of the property that you have or the number of trees, you want to try to get a representative sample of the amount that you're dealing with. And every site and location is different, of course. Um, size of trees, age of trees, you have to take all of that into consideration. What you're willing to do as far as any kind of management options, all of that is dependent on you. First, we'll start with the Asian citrus psyllid. When we're dealing with this time of year, which we are in May right now, so we're dealing with, um, we've had some spring flushes, you know, bloom is over, the trees are starting to flush out. And what that means is that the trees are getting new growth. The new growth is a prime area for the Asian citrus psyllid. They absolutely love this small growth that you can see here. This is what we call a feather flush. So it's the, the beginnings of the new growth coming out. And the psyllid will lay its eggs inside the closed leaves that are here. It's a very good environment for that. And the eggs will stay there until they hatch, of course. And then the next stage in the life cycle is called the nymph. And that stage can move around, so that, but they do like that tender flush. So when you're looking for an Asian citrus psyllid, that's basically the first place you're going to look as far as when you're looking for the beginning of their life cycle. You can see an Asian citrus psyllid adult, usually kind of anywhere on the tree. Um, they're small, their wings are sort of upright. Let me see if I can find one here. The psyllid has what we call a piercing sucking mouth part. So it feeds on the phloem sap of the tree 
And as it's feeding, it can acquire the bacterium if it's feeding on a, a tree that already has the disease, and it can also transmit the bacterium to a healthy tree or a diseased tree, which further, it, it's just a frequency of inoculation if we're dealing with trees that are getting infected over and over and over again by constant solid pressure. So as you kind of move through your block, I want you to think of a couple of different things or your group of trees. When we're in a block setting like we are, the outer rows or the border trees, they tend to have the most psyllids on them because that's the first thing the psyllids attract to and get to. So as you kind of get into the block, you may see that you have less psyllids um, as you go more into the trees. And also if you're thinking, if you're in like a a yard, you're a homeowner and you have your trees, if you have citrus trees that are maybe near a, a larger tree that's shading it some or covering it, you may have less solid pressure as well. So a few other things that we can think about when we're looking at, um, when we're scouting, we want to look at damage. That can be an indication of, of pest pressure that maybe you don't see. When so on this, on this flush here, this is an, a bit of an older flush, you can see that feeding from the Asian citrus psyllid when the flush was small like this or the feather flush has caused this distortion in the leaf. So that's how you can tell that you've had some insect damage. Now these leaves will never go back to a normal looking leaf. Um, so if you do address the problem, or you have a control method, the oncoming flesh or newer flesh maybe can not be affected by it if you um, keep on track with, with management. Here on this leaf, I find another insect that we deal with a lot in citrus, and this is the leaf miner. And the leaf miner also, again, loves this young, tender flesh. And the leaf miner is a small moth, and the larval stages of the leaf miner is what is causing this damage. And it's basically tunneling through the layers of the leaf and just mining basically through that leaf. And this can also, at this point, this leaf is not distorted from it, but if the damage gets bad enough, the leaf can curl up and be distorted as well. And again, if you do um, end up controlling that larva, your leaf is, is going to stay that way. The damage will stay there for the life of the leaf. So when you're scouting, it's always good to have a hand lens. Um, if you don't have something like this, you can use a magnifying glass to help you really see a lot of these insects because they are so small. So when I'm here, I'm looking at the feather flush. I'm going to be looking for any of the little eggs of the psyllid, which are going to be like a yellowish orange color. And then I can also see if there are any nymphs, um, which is of course that second stage of the psyllid. Um, they're little yellow insects with uh, little red eyes. So they're pretty easy to spot and they can move around. So you may see them um, stationary or you may see them moving. But a hand lens or a magnifying glass will help you see you know, in those hard to reach areas as well as the small insects. Um, other insects that you can look for are going to be like mites. We have red mite, we've got a two spotted mite, we've got a couple of different kinds, um, rust mite. The rust mite, if you have fruit on your tree, you'll know that you have rust mite because you'll see like a purplish bronzes discoloration on the fruit peel um, but other than that it's really hard to see any kind of rust mite with a hand lens or definitely not with the naked eye um, but as you go through you can see that sometimes there's a scratchy appearance on the leaf on the top side of the leaf and that can that um, is an indication of mite damage so they feed on the leaf as well and they can usually be found in, in large numbers on the underside of the leaf. So when you're looking, you want to look at all parts. You want to look at the top, you want to look on the underside, you want to look at the twigs, the older leaves, the younger leaves, um, to find those different insects. Now with citrus canker, um, it's a bacterial disease. It will infect any kind of wound on a leaf. So here's an example of 
lesions that the, the bacteria got into the wound that was on the side of this hole. You know, this hole could just be mechanical damage, something that just ripped open the leaf. And then on the back side, you can really see those lesions. When you're scouting for citrus canker, it's always important to start with the back side of the leaf. That's where it starts to develop first. Um, and in older stages of the lesions, they can go up into the top of the leaf. But canker has a raised, quirky looking appearance to it. It can be large lesions. There can be, um, the leaves can be speckled with small lesions. So it just depends on how the, the bacteria is interacting with your tree. Now the leaf miner that I showed earlier, that creates a wound in the leaf surface. So sometimes you will see canker lesions dotted all along that little tunneling. Um, if you have leaf miner and canker at the same time. All right, so now when I'm looking around, I'm gonna to look to see if there's any fungal diseases that I can find. And right away, I spot this fungal disease here. And it is dark spots on the underside of the leaf. Again, um, this is a prime spot to look. This disease here is called greasy spot. And it usually always begins on the bottom of the leaf, so that's where you're going to find it mostly. This has now spread to the top of the leaf, so it's later stages of the disease. And you can see in some cases it causes a discoloration a little bit there. Um, the lesions are flat. They're not raised, like as in the um, case of canker. And they do kind of look like grease has been smudged onto the leaf. So when you're looking at your, le your leaves and your trees, you want to look at all the different kinds of symptoms because there are some diseases that can be mistaken for each other, um, but they all usually have their own distinct characteristics that can help you decide which disease you're actually dealing with. If it's not a very large infestation of either an insect or a disease, you may not need to do anything about it. You know, these things happen in nature. This is what we, what we deal with. But when you have part of you know, a disease infestation or pests that's limiting the productivity of your tree, the leaves are getting too badly affected so where they can't photosynthesize the way they should because there's so much damage on them, um, that's when action needs to be taken. And we can definitely help you in deciding which, where you are in that stage. Sometimes when you're scouting, you may find a nice surprise because there are plenty of beneficial insects that live in citrus groves as well. So as I'm looking around this tree, I find under here is a ladybug larva. Now this insect is beneficial because it eats aphids, it eats um, scale, it can eat mealybug. So we definitely want to keep this kind of guy around. doesn't look anything like an adult ladybug. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind as we're scouting. What are the different life stages of these insects that we're looking for that we may find? On this leaf, you'll see that there's like a, a black mold and we call this sooty mold. And it's also here and then it's in larger quantities on leaves over here. And on this leaf as well, you'll see these small insects, and that's a type of scale. And the scale can, it produces a honeydew, we call it, and it's a secretion, and the black mold grows on that. So that's where that comes from. So if you see this black mold, you have some sort of insect that's going to be secreting the honeydew. And scale does that, mealybugs aphids, those sort of insects will secrete this. And you will also find ants, because the ants love the honeydew as well. So we've go gone over a few scouting techniques um, that can be useful to you when you're looking at your tree and diff thinking about different management options. I recommend scouting your tree maybe once a month, depending on the season, especially when we have these spring flushes. We also have a major flush in the fall that can attract these insects. Um, but when you're out and about, just kind of take a look at your tree, learn what's happening with it. Uh, 
the different times of year that you may find more insects than not on your tree. If you need any help with scouting or definitely have an insect or a disease that you need identification with, you can always contact us at any UF IFAS Extension Office. We have one in every county in Florida. Um, and we'll be more than happy to help you. And even if you need someone to come out and maybe look at your tree, we can do that as well and we can schedule a time to come take a look at what you have. Thank you.